Hey there, AP Macro students. It's Mr. White here with some notes for you about the probably the most important organization in all of economics, or at least in uh, the American economic system, which is the Federal Reserve. So you've probably heard of the Federal Reserve, and if you never knew what it was, today we're going to talk about what it is and what they do and why they are so important. So uh, get out your notes and follow along. So the Federal Reserve is a bank. That's the first thing. You got to put that in your head. The Federal Reserve is actually the bank of the United States, and, and you're probably familiar with them because a lot of you are carrying around Federal Reserve notes in your pocket right now. A Federal Reserve note is U.S. currency. It says it right there at the top. So the Federal Reserve, also known as the Fed in economic lingo, is the central bank of the United States. It was created by an act of Congress back in 1913, uh, conveniently called the Federal Reserve Act. Uh, but what's really interesting is that even though it's called federal and it was created by Congress, the Federal Reserve is officially not a part of the U.S. government. Now, they work hand in hand with the U.S. government. Their leaders are uh, chosen and appointed by the government. But officially, the Fed is independent, and they're very proud of that independence. They are not political. They're not Republican. They're not Democrat. They're just a bunch of nerdy economists who try to stabilize the nation's money supply. And, and so that brings us to our next point, that a central bank, any central bank, and, and you know, it's important to keep in mind the United States is not the only country that has a central bank. Virtually every major economy in the world has their own central bank. Um, and, and the whole purpose of a central bank is to oversee the banking system and regulate how much money is available in the economy. Now, when a central bank regulates the amount of money in the economy, it's what we officially call monetary policy. You know, if you just take out that T-A-R from the word monetary, it would say money. So monetary policy is money policy. Money has a direct effect on a nation's economic growth. Uh, more money can expand the economy. Less money can actually contract the economy. So let's talk more about what the Federal Reserve does and how the Federal Reserve works. So let's start with the structure of the Federal Reserve. First of all, the Fed is located in Washington, D.C. I know that's a little confusing because, like I said, they're not part of the government, but they're located right in and around all those other important government buildings. Now, the main leadership of the Fed is composed of a board of seven governors. Now, they're not governors of states. We're not talking like Greg Abbott, uh, but we're talking about economists um, who basically run the Fed. Now, the governors are appointed by the president of the United States and confirmed by the Senate, and they get to serve a 14 year term in office. And the whole point of this is to sort of shield them from any kind of political pressures. You know, if somebody appoints you, you may want to please them or, or do what they tell you. Right. So if the president appoints you, you may feel pressured to do what the president wants. But if you have a 14 year term in office, it doesn't matter if the president likes you or not. When your term is up, that president is already going to be out because if you do the math, the longest any president can serve in office is only eight years, right? So this is a really clever way to make sure that the Fed maintains its role as an independent watchdog over the banking system and um, the, the defenders of monetary policy. Okay. Now, the board is led by one person called a chairman. OK, and, and actually pretty recently we had a chairwoman and, and just like the other members of the Board of Governors, they are appointed by the president and they're confirmed by the Senate, but they only get to serve four years in office. OK, the previous chairperson is the lady you see right here. Her name is Janet Yellen. Uh, she was a, a very good Fed chair and she oversaw a very prosperous time in our economy, uh, but she was replaced in 2018 by the current Fed chair, a gentleman named Jerome Powell. There's Jerome Powell right there. Uh, Jerome Powell is, is of the same mind as Janet Yellen. As a matter of fact, he was a member of the Board of Governors while she was the chair. Uh, and so honestly, Jerome Powell hasn't made any big changes from the way Janet Yellen was doing things, uh, but it was just he was President Trump's choice to su succeed Janet Yellen uh, when he got the chance to appoint a new Fed chair uh, in 2018. Now, the most important thing you should know about the Fed, I mean, all this is you know good to know sort of the nuts and bolts of how the Fed works, but the most important thing to know is what is the Fed's goal? What is their mission? 
Congress has given the Fed a dual mandate. That's what they call it. The dual mandate is to maintain price stability and full employment in the U.S. economy. Okay, price stability just means low inflation. Full employment means the natural rate of unemployment, right? Four to six percent is what we're going for. Now, the most important part of the Fed uh, is the group that conducts monetary policy. And, and the group that conducts monetary policy is called the Federal Open Market Committee, or the FOMC for short. The FOMC is run by those seven governors that we just talked about and the chairman, but they're joined by five of the 12 regional Fed Bank presidents. Now, that's something we haven't really talked about yet, uh, but there are Federal Reserve Banks spread out all across the country, and each of these 12 Federal Reserve Banks has a president. The president of each Federal Reserve Bank uh, has a role to play in shaping our monetary policy, but only five of them at a time get a chance to actually cast a vote when it comes to making monetary policy decisions. So, as I said, all of the 12 bank presidents get to attend an FOMC meeting. As a matter of fact, the picture you see right here is a picture of an FOMC meeting where they're all sitting around in Washington, D.C., and they're talking about the goals and the objectives of the Fed and, and sort of what's going on in the U.S. economy and what they can do to try to keep the economy on track. But of all those 12 presidents, only five of them get to vote. Now, the one that always gets to vote is the president of the New York Fed. And the other four positions rotate on a yearly basis. As a matter of fact, currently right now in 2020, the voting members are Philadelphia, Dallas, Cleveland, and Minneapolis. So right now, uh, hey, we have a little say in monetary policy, but I have a quick question for you. Why do you think that the president of the New York Fed is the only one of the 12 regional bank presidents who always gets a vote at the FOMC? Hmm. Well, if you said it's because New York has an oversized role in our economy, you're absolutely correct. New York is the home of the U.S. stock market. And, you know, more practically, when the Fed does an open market action, it usually involves buying and selling U.S. government bonds. And the buying and selling of U.S. government bonds actually takes place at the New York Fed. And so it makes sense that they would always have a say over how things go with our monetary policy. Now, let's talk about these different regions of the Fed. As a matter of fact, you can see here on our colorful map, uh, the U.S. is broken up into 12 regions, and, and most of the boundaries of these regions are decided by state boundaries. But, of course, you can see there are some that, that uh, you know, bisect states, or in some cases, states might even be split into three different districts. Uh, but as you can see here, we here in Texas are located in the 11th district. And the Federal Reserve Bank for the 11th district is located in Dallas. Okay, so that's why they call it the Dallas Fed. You can see there are other prominent cities, cities I know you've heard of, like the, the region that's right next to us, the 6th district is centered in Atlanta. To the north of us, we have the 10th district in Kansas City. Uh, to our west, we have the 12th district in San Francisco. And, and you can see that the districts all start in the northeast with District 1, which is headquartered in Boston, uh, and they work their way westward across the country. Now, huh, another little quick question. Why do you think that the districts out west are so much bigger than the districts over in the east? Maybe you noticed the districts in the east are pretty small. Well, if you remember your geography class, you probably learned that the western half of the United States is not nearly as densely populated as the eastern. Uh, as a matter of fact, 70% of U.S. population is located to the east of the Mississippi River. So it makes sense that uh, since those regions have to service all the banks within their borders, uh, the areas that have a bigger population have more banks and they can't cover as much ground as, for example, like the San Francisco Fed. Uh, a lot of that region is just wide open desert and prairie and there's just not a lot of people, so there's not a lot of banks. Uh, and so that's why San Francisco can cover such an enormous area. Now, one cool trick I can show you is if you look on a dollar bill, if you got a dollar bill, you can get it out and look right now. Uh, there is on the face side of the dollar bill, a black circle that's sort of spiky on the edges. And it says Federal Reserve Bank of, and then there's like a big letter right in the middle. Like you see the one here on our screen is a G. 
Well, G is Chicago, Illinois, because if you look on our map here, Chicago is the seventh Federal Reserve District. And the letter G is the seventh letter of the alphabet. And so that's how you can know that this was from Chicago, Illinois. It means that essentially the Chicago Fed ordered that dollar bill from the Treasury. It was delivered to the Chicago Fed, and it was the Chicago Fed that put that dollar into circulation. So that means that, that your dollar bill originated from somewhere within that seventh district. So it could have come from Detroit. It could have come from Chicago. Uh, it could have come from Green Bay, Wisconsin. It could have come from a lot of different places within that green zone. But somehow it found its way into your pocket. Just think back to that money multiplier we talked about. So here's another map of the Federal Reserve districts. You just take a look, right? We got it. We're here in the 11th district. Oh, and uh, just as a side note, here in Houston, we actually have a Federal Reserve uh, branch. It's called the Federal Reserve of Dallas Houston branch. And you can actually go there for a tour. It's, it's pretty cool. Okay, so here's a little flow chart for how the Fed works. We've, we've got the Federal Reserve Bank in Washington, D.C. That's the main one. That's where we have the seven governors and the Fed chair. Uh, and that's where they have those FOMC meetings to conduct monetary policy. Now, the Federal Reserve is over the 12 district banks, right? We just talked about all those 12 district banks. Those 12 district banks are the banks of all of our commercial banks, okay? So a commercial bank means a bank like Wells Fargo or Bank of America or Chase or Capital One or SciFair Federal Credit Union, you know, any of those banks where you can go deposit money and set up a checking or savings account. Now, we can set up accounts at Wells Fargo and you might ask yourself, or maybe you've never thought about it, but where does Wells Fargo have their checking account? You know, businesses can have a checking account at Wells Fargo too, but does Wells Fargo have their checking account at Bank of America? Well, no, Wells Fargo keeps their money with the Federal Reserve. For example, if, if you bank at Wells Fargo that's, you know, somewhere nearby your house, they do their banking with the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, either through the Houston branch or through the direct Dallas branch located in Dallas, Texas, right? Um, and, and every other commercial bank around the country goes through a Federal Reserve Bank. One important thing that I really want you to remember about the Federal Reserve, and this is something you're going to hear me say probably over and over and over again, the Fed is the bank of banks. Okay, the Federal Reserve is not a bank for people like me and you. It's, it's not a bank for businesses. They only service commercial banks and the federal government. And so that's just sort of how the flow of, uh, of I would say responsibility, but the, the flow of, of power, the flow of monetary policy goes through the US. Uh, it starts at the Federal Reserve in Washington, DC. The monetary policy is distributed out to those 12 regional Fed banks, and then those 12 regional Fed banks service the commercial banks within their district. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the three main tools of monetary policy, because I keep talking about monetary policy and the FOMC and all this, but I haven't really told you what it is that they do and how it is that they can influence the supply of money. Well, they have three main tools, and we're going to talk about these in depth in the next video. The first tool is called open market operations. It has to do with buying and selling government bonds. The second tool is reserve requirements. They can basically tell banks how much money they have to reserve and how much they can lend out. And the last is interest rates. And that means how much it costs when you wanna borrow money. The Fed has tremendous control over how much it costs for people and businesses to borrow money in the US economy. So that's it for our first video about the Fed. Make sure you watch the second video about the Fed where I go into all the nuts and bolts of how monetary policy works. Hope you guys like this video. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me, you can send me a message through Remind, or you can ask me in class. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day.